Welcome to the Quadcopter Build Series 4, Episode 5. In this episode, we're going to do the final bits and pieces we need to do to this model to get it flying in preparation for the final full video in this series, which will be about putting the Connex FPV high definition system on top. In this video, we will take all of the pieces that we've done so far and we'll make sure that everything's working. We'll test the motors, we'll do the last bits of configuration in Betaflight for the Betaflight F3 flight controller. And then we'll flash the ESCs with the BL Heli S updated firmware so that we can make them say the Imperial March. I'll go through the process and then finally we'll take it out for a test hover. By that point then, we'll be ready for that next video. So just to very quickly recap, we have a model on the radio and that model is set up and uh, ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug this model into the computer first of all. So here we are on the PC in Betaflight. I'll plug it in. There we go. We're now connected. So let's click connect in Betaflight and do the last pieces. Now what we're going to go through here is the standard setup that I always go through when I'm setting up a quadcopter. Well, any multi-rotor actually. So first of all, we're going to set up the radio, make sure that that's happy. We're going to calibrate the sensors and level. We're then going to calibrate the motors and check the motor direction. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that because these guys should run D-shot for these ESCs that we have, but we'll have to test that. We'll then also, while we're at that bit, we'll also look at uh, the direction, make sure they're all working, configure any extra modes that we need, and finally go and do a test hover. So we're going to go through more or less that process. Again, because it's not a beginner series this one, we're going to go through them pretty quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the receiver bits and pieces. So we're going to check the configuration. We have S bus selected and we have a serial base receiver. As we already talked about in the previous video, we've had to enable UART2 in order to have that serial piece working. If we go into the receiver tab, as I move the sticks on the radio, there's the throttle moving fine. We also have the rudder. You can see the little model at the bottom right hand corner. And there is the elevator or pitch and aileron or roll is working perfectly as well. If you find when you come in here, of course, that the sticks are not matching the controls here on the screen, then just change your channel map. The only other thing we did in here was make sure that the RSSI channel, which we're using that little trick from the XM Plus receiver is set to 16, because auxiliary 12, which is bouncing around like crazy right now, but that's because the radio and the model are so close together, that is giving us our RSSI value. The only things we need to check in here on the radio is make sure that all the controls settle at 1500, which they are. If they're not, use the sub trims in your menus to get that sorted. And also make sure that the values on the channels don't go below 1000 or above 2000, because that will just make everything a little bit unhappy. While you're in here, also worthwhile doing the failsafe pieces. We'll turn on expert mode. Uh, there's a full video that we've done on failsafe and how you set it up. So go through here and make sure that you've got it set. Now I quite like my when my failsafe happens for the quad to drop. I know other people like land. This will kind of work for me at the moment. Next thing I'd do would be to calibrate the sensors. So at the moment, actually, it's pretty spot on. Uh, I would say that's pretty flat and it is within a degree or two. For the test flight, that's completely fine. After the test flight, if I'm finding it drifting a little bit, I'll redo the accelerometer calibration, but I think that's pretty close right now. Make sure it moves in the right way. So when the nose goes down, the nose on the screen goes down. Yeah, that's good. So my, my board orientation is all right as well. Okay, that's all good stuff. Now, the next thing we need to do is the stuff for the motors. Now, you'll notice I have a uh, little light bulb that's connected here. It just makes sure that I can't get too much current into this if I've wired something incorrectly. Now, what I have done on here is I have already put a voltmeter and an ohmmeter around on all the pins and made sure there aren't dead short, so that should be good. So the final thing we'll do then, before we plug in the motors and have a go, we need to make sure that we've got the right ESC motor set up. I think these guys are going to support D-Shot. It doesn't say anything in the listing on Banggood, actually, where I got these motors from. But I'm guessing that they will, because it's got D-Shot written on the case. So we'll try D-Shot 150. Uh, if you select D-Shot, then it, it does make all this setup stuff for the ESC motor features a lot easier. So let's go into the motors tab. Now... 
we haven't got any props enabled at all. Uh, nothing is on here. So I am now going to plug in the battery into the connector and we'll hear it fire up. Okay, that sounds promising. So we'll say, I understand the risks. We'll slide the master up and hopefully, fantastic, all the motors start at identical times. Great, so we'll just make sure everything's working and plugged in properly. So this should be motor one and it should be turning in a clockwise direction. Which it is, awesome. This should be motor three. I'm gonna cover the bulb up so that you can see what I'm looking at. This should be motor three. I'm gonna, again, fire that up. Ah, wrong way around. That's gonna to have to be reversed. Motor four, which is the front right one. Let me bring that in so you can see it. Make sure nothing's touching it. Motor four. Reversed as well. Oh dear. So let me just come out of that. Unplug my battery for the moment. So the motors and stuff are working, the motor's in the right place. I'm gonna to have to reverse a few of these and that's fine. So I've just made a quick note of which ones are good and which ones are bad. So now we'll need to go into BL Heli. So I'm gonna disconnect in beta flight and I'm gonna run the BL Heli pieces. While we are starting BL Heli, it's worthwhile me talking about the pieces that you need in order for us to get the updated version of the software. Now, I'll put a link in the description where you're gonna download this from, but if you search for BL Heli S Startup Tones, you'll find this page, but the link in the description should hopefully save you a bit of time. Uh, what you do here is that you can set up a particular beep strength, and that will select one or three or four slightly wacky startup tones, and I'm going to want the Imperial March, which is uh, tone strength 91, and then because it's one shot, 150 we should have a single arming tone if it's working at the bottom there is the BL heli tones.zip file download and put that somewhere on your computer because we need to connect to our ESCs and just see which version that they're already using so I'm going to click connect on com5 we're going to have to connect the power to the ESCs again we shouldn't have any completion tones because it's in programming mode, which is good. We're going to say read setup. There are all of our ESCs. They are ESC AH20s in the version 16.6. .6. Now, I actually have AH20 Rev 16.5 is the one that I need. I've copied that into a place I can get to. And now I'm going to flash that onto these ESCs. I'm also going to take the opportunity to reverse those ESCs that were wrong as well. So ESC1 was fine. ESC2 needs reversing. ESC3 needed reversing as well. And so did 4. I'm spectacularly unlucky with this. So we'll write that setup. I'll just read the setup just to make sure that everything's changed. Normal reverse, reverse, fabulous. Right, now we're going to actually flash the firmware from 16.6 .6 to 16.65, which is the one we downloaded, that will allow us to do that wacky tone stuff. So we're going to select the file manually. We're going to navigate to it on the computer. AH20 Rev1665 file, click open. there it is being flashed. I'm going to flash the firmware on here, same thing, same file. Last couple. And with this last one flashed, then that should be the main part of the work done. The last thing we're gonna to have to do then is set up the beacon strength. Now, beacon strength is going to give us the actual tune that we want. So if I just double check the documentation, the beep strength tone I want is 91. So the beep strength 
Ooh, I need it set to 91. Right setup. Let's just read the setup back, make sure we're all happy. Now we could have actually flashed all. Uh, I actually prefer to do them one by one just so if there's a hiccup I can keep track of everything. That looks really good. So I'm going to disconnect. Now we are ready to put the props on this thing, go out into the back garden and try a test hover. See you in a second. While I was finishing making this little thing, it's been raining in the back garden, but now it's stopped. So for a quick test hover, I've just jumped into the back garden and very, very quickly tested this little guy out. And as you can see, it flies really well. Not only do I plug it in and get my Imperial March, it's flying great. Now, hovering around about 35-40% throttle, so we've got lots of additional weight we can put on here for our conic system, so that's good. But all in all, this is flying really nicely. So now we are ready to go on to the final video in the series where we're actually going to connect up the Connex HD FPV system onto this frame, which was kind of the reason why we've been building this particular frame all along. Now, out of the box innovations who made this frame have two versions. They have this one here that we're going to use for Connex and they have one for traditional FPV as well. But join us for the last video in the series where we're going to pull out the Connex stuff, update the firmware on it, plug it all in, make the connections for the on-screen display and test it all works. So hopefully I'll see you there. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes you fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.